In this video, I will show you how to go from this to this in Hogwarts Legacy without spending the $1,700 on a $4090 to do it. It's super simple, super easy, and can not only help you get higher FPS values overall with your average, but it can drastically reduce the frame rate drops you will encounter from shader compilation. I will also show you the results from 1080p and 4K in this video, as well as giving you tips on certain settings you should be disabling to increase your FPS overall as well. So, if this helps you, leave a like on the video, let me know how much it helped you in the comments down below, and feel free to share this with a friend to help them out as well. Alright, so to start off, these are the 1080p benchmarks running on my PC with a Ryzen 9 5950X and a 3080 with 32GB of RAM. You would think I would have no trouble at all with running a game like this with RTX on, no DLSS. I mean, I've done that with other games in the past, but as you can see here, it is actually struggling quite a bit. On the left, you have the raw performance of the game at 1080p with no DLSS, all RTX options on and at Ultra as well. And on the right, you then have my fixed results with DLSS on quality, no RTX, and the fixes that I'll be showing you in this video. So with my fixes, all of the spots that were notorious for dropping my FPS no longer dropped them as hard. It was completely smooth, and as you can see, it's more than just turning off RTX that it's giving us a huge performance boost, although that is definitely helping us a lot. But because the ray tracing in this game is pretty broken and doesn't really work right, and the options that do work right end up looking worse than just normal like reflections and shadows, we actually will not be using ray tracing at all, and that's why you must turn it off in this game. So, that is the first tip, is to turn off ray tracing in this game. It does not look any better, it actually hurts your performance by a lot for no visual impact at all. In fact, your game will even look better by turning it off. And so as you can see here, these are the 4K benchmarks. Even at 4K though, the raw performance was absolutely unplayable when I had no DLSS and ray tracing on Ultra. And even with DLSS on quality, it of course helped, but we still saw major FPS drops. So, turning DLSS onto quality and RTX off helped a lot with the FPS, but we still had these pesky, awful FPS drops with shader compilation in the game, and to fix that, we need to apply a few things. And once we do, you will end up with this. 4K at a pretty much stable 60 FPS across the board. Your frames will drop to maybe like 55 on the low end. I was able to get basically 4K 60 non-stop. So now, let's just dive into how to fix these issues. So the first thing that we are going to do is adding a simple bit of text to the engine.ini file in your game files. This one helps removing the awful shader compilation issue and makes your game run way smoother with less horrible drops to, to 20 FPS or below. This is the biggest one. So what you're going to do is hit the Windows key and type in percent app data percent and then click on this little link right here. After that, follow the path of folders that I do in the video and you will end up with all of these little INI files. Once you're there, find the engine file, open it in any basic text editor and paste in this bit of code right here at the very bottom like so. And of course, I will leave this bit of code in the description down below for all of you guys to copy and paste into your games. Once you've pasted the code into the file, the next thing you're going to do is changing the r.streaming.poolSize value right there to something that suits your hardware. So if you have a GPU with 4 gigabytes of VRAM, try putting it to 1024. If you have a GPU with 6 gigabytes of VRAM, try putting it to 2048. If you have an 8 gigabyte card, you should try 3072, and anybody with 10 gigabytes or higher can either try 4096 or 5120. These are the amount of VRAM that the pool can actually use. So feel free to try a higher or lower value here to see what actually works best for your hardware. On my 3080 with 10 gigabytes of GDDR6X, I'm actually running 4096 for this value. But if you have something with more than 12 gigabytes of VRAM, you should be able to run 5120 just fine. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is install the Ascendio mod from the Nexus. This is a great mod at increasing your average FPS and helping to create a smoother experience across the board. It's made by an amazing team over there. All credit goes to them, of course. They are awesome people, and this mod installer is insanely smooth to use. Super easy. I will, of course, leave a link to this Nexus page in the description down below as well. So like I said, it's super easy to install. You just go to the Files tab here, then find the top file, and click Manual Download. 
After you click that, click slow download and wait for the file to finish downloading. Once it's done, open the file, run the program, click on more info in the pop-up window there and click run anyway. This program is totally safe, it's just Windows being cautious. The program will then open, you click install, and you are done. You can click close and you're done. That's that one installed, super easy. Ascendio mod makers, you guys are awesome for that. One more thing you wanna make sure that you do is you want to make sure that you go onto your desktop, you right click, go to your NVIDIA control panel. Once you're in there, go to manage 3D settings. Once that loads, you want to scroll down in this menu to shader cache size and change that from driver default to 10 gigabytes. This will allow your computer to store 10 gigabytes of compiled shaders and information about them instead of whatever it was before. And the very last thing that we're going to do is extremely simple and can actually help in a lot of edge cases, so we're going to include it here anyway just to be really be cautious. So, press the Windows key, type in GPU into the search bar there, and hit enter. Once you're in this menu here, just turn on the setting here for Hardware Accelerated GPU Scheduling. In some cases, this can increase your performance, and in some other cases, it'll just help allow your GPU to actually run a little bit faster on certain edge cases in games. It is also worth noting that I have been informed that Hogwarts Legacy appears to have a memory leak when you combine it with Discord. So if your performance feels like it's getting worse the longer you play, and you have Discord open in the background, fully close Discord and that can actually help increase your FPS as well. On top of that, Hogwarts Legacy itself has a memory leak issue too, so I would recommend saving and closing the game every two hours or so to help minimize the memory leak issues, so that way you don't start dropping more and more FPS over time. And that is it. That's all, that's all it is. This video is super simple, super easy, and uh, these fixes along with turning on GPU acceleration, turning on DLSS to quality, turning off the awful ray tracing will help boost your FPS in Hogwarts Legacy. So once again, if this video did help you, if this helped you get your game to run properly, please leave a like on the video, comment down below letting others know that it actually worked so people feel uh, more inclined to actually use it and trust this information, and on top of that, feel free to hit that subscribe button on your way out and share this video with friends to help them out as well. So that will do it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you at the next video. Have fun in Hogwarts Legacy, and I will see you guys later. Bye, guys.